So welcome everybody. Welcome to a new human experience podcast. Today is August the 12th, 2021. The topic tonight is seeing all the pieces. Um, I just want to kind of say that every, every minute, maybe even every second, we are all being bombarded with so many bits of information. And um, some people have said that we, we are being bombarded with 2 million bits of information. Now, I, I don't know whether that is true or not, but I do know that we are definitely being bombarded by a lot of information. A, um, we, if you just go to social media, any kind of social media, you will see that, um, let's say when I go in and check my, uh, my Instagram, it's like so many different messages from different groups and on Facebook, on um, emails, all of those things. If I have not checked my email or clean up my email for a, a few days, sometimes when I when I'm busy for the weekend and when I, when I check back in on Monday, there's there is at least 30, 40 new emails and and it's like for me that's a lot and I do know that for some people that's their numbers are even more crazy because I know um, I know Franco mentioned that like he has a few thousand emails that um, he has to go through and that's really crazy how how can anybody get through that that amount of information and be able to respond to each one um, appropriately. That's just taking up too much of our time to do that. So first point is that we are being bombarded with a lot of information. But then on the flip side, though, even though we, we have so much information, there is also another part of it is that um, there is a lot of information, but there, there's a lot of information about certain things, whereas there's a lot of information that we don't see or is actually suppressed and hid from us. Those are the information that we, for whatever reason, whether it is um, some people's, I would say, consciously chose for other people that they shouldn't see it, or it is our, our own, um, we ourselves kind of elected to not see those information as well, to be disconnected from those information. So there is this dichotomy of we are seeing a lot of information. On the other hand, though, there are still a lot of holes. We are not seeing the whole picture. We are seeing um, disproportionate amount of information, but only in a certain categories where, and, and then in some other categories, we are missing a lot of information as well. And those are the information that we have to really consciously go and look for them if we want to fill in the, um, those holes in our own awareness. So there are these two things. So the question, the better question is that are we seeing all the information that we needed to know in order to have an authentic experience of life. So that is the question that I've been asking lately. And, and I asked this question because I was reminded by a, a course that I've been taking. And I, I think I've mentioned it a um, couple of times in other contexts. Um, 
as well that I started taking this this class maybe about a month ago. And this is about a um, the the premise of this course is about healing the body. And the premise is very simple is that we have a natural blueprint of the optimal functioning of our body at birth. And as time goes on, and as time, um, as we start growing up, is that whenever we encounter a trauma, whether that trauma is um, physical, a trauma to our physical body, or to our emotional, or maybe to our spiritual bodies, it does not matter. And whenever we encounter a traumatic experience that we don't know or we don't have a um, the appropriate response for our body would adapt to the the trauma to allow us to keep going so let's say if a trauma um, hits our let's say our thyroid then it hits maybe the left tip of the, the thyroid, maybe something happened to that. It just so happened that that the energetic pathway was, was um, somehow something went wrong at that. What the body does is it reroute the energetic pathway to other parts of the body in order to compensate and adapt. So that's what our body does for us at a very unconscious level and we don't know about it but our body actually does so many things all without us needing to know however there comes a point that because there have been so many layers and layers of adaptation that certain parts of the energy pathways, the natural energy pathways of our, our body's um, way of being able to heal ourselves become offline, or a better word is that is not seen by our innate healing abilities, or the controllers that is within our innate healing abilities. And when that happens, then it's like we have a blind spot in our body being able to heal itself. So when more and more and more of the blind spots, when we have more of and more of these blind spots, then um, our body's ability to respond to any incoming events will become more and more limited until it gets to a, a point where um, something all of a sudden comes in, something new. It could be, for example, an accident or something, uh, an emotional trauma, or it could be a, a layering of several things hitting us at once. And it kind of overloads our bodies ability to respond and take care of itself. And that's when our immune system will start to lose its ability to bounce back. And we are kind of locked in a downward spiral. So the antidote to that is to find out where they are the blind spots in our ability to in our body's ability to see itself when we are able to locate the blind spots and bring those blind spots back to the awareness of our innate ability to heal ourselves then we start to um, get out of the the get out of the downward spiral process and we start to the body start to become flexible again so that the more flexible we are the easier the healthier our body actually is 
And so that is what um, I've been learning, how to find the blind spots. And of course, when I um, being exposed to this, this philosophy, I, I innately understand that this philosophy is not just for healing the body, it's also applicable to um, raising our own consciousness as well. What are we not seeing about ourselves that keeps us at the consciousness level that we are at and, and prevents us from going further? So that would be the question that I, I would ask myself. I ask the question, not that there is anything wrong with um, where our consciousness may be. There's nothing wrong with where we are in the moment. However, everyone wants to grow. And so I am curious to find out what it is that I'm not seeing in my own awareness, in my own consciousness that is keeping me where I'm at. So that's, that's really all what I'm trying to, to explore in this week's, in this episode is finding out ways to allow um, myself and everyone else who are interested to be able to find those blind spots. What are we not seeing about ourselves? And also, how do we see what we are not seeing about ourselves? How do we give ourselves that opportunity to, to find out what we don't know? So first I want to um, look at is the first thing is really, uh, or, or, or I would say the, the first kind of um, ways to, to see the things that we don't know about ourselves is to check in with ourselves. So this, this seems very logical and intuitive. However, um, I assure you, it is. it may sound simple, it may sound logical, but a lot of the times we don't do that because we are very much conditioned to get information from outside of ourselves. We are very much programmed to be outward referencing. And we are very good at looking at ourselves from someone else's point of reference. We don't actually see ourselves. We actually see ourselves as how other people see us. So what I'm proposing is is to actually start to see yourself from your own point of view, rather than trying to see yourself through someone else's point of view. So check in with yourself. Instead of getting information from outside, is to start to get information from within. And also to know, to really understand that um, we, we have this, this programmed um, kind of need to be accepted. And because of that, it actually predisposes us to see ourselves from other people's point of view. So part of starting to look at ourselves from our own point of view is the need to let go of 
I would say the need to be accepted by others. And that is not easy. So let go of needing to be accepted. Let go of needing to be right. Let go of needing to know and to really embrace the the idea that you don't know you don't know what you don't know and that's okay is you don't need to know and from not knowing it's actually a very powerful position to be because if you know everything it's it's like a glass that is full you cannot put anything else in it but when you really acknowledge that you don't know you don't know a lot of things and you start from there start from you don't know when you start from you don't know and you really be in the moment because when you know everything and somebody asks you a question you have you would be very naturally um go into your your brain which is your your data bank to get up information that you have stored which are information that um a lot of it is is something that you have learned from other people, from sources outside yourself. Whereas if you go from the point that you don't know, then when someone asks you a question or when you ask yourself a question, for example, the question of what am I not seeing about myself? When you ask that question and you ask it from the point that you don't know anything, it actually frees you up to start to check inward. And because when you check in with yourself, you are the only authority of yourself mm. other people may claim to be there i'm quite sure that there are there are other people who would claim let's say yet there are probably doctors who would claim to know you better than you know yourself and i'm quite sure that there are um people you're in relationship with that can tell you that they know you better than you know yourself so However, when you get to the point where you are comfortable to see yourself, to see you from your own point of view rather than from other people's point of view, then you are the only authority. No one else can tell you whether you're right or wrong especially when you let go of the need to be right, then it actually opens up for a lot of more experimentation and a lot more exploration to get to know yourself and to get to see what it is that about yourself that you haven't seen yet. So this one tool of check in with yourself to remember to see yourself from your own point of view, then um, it will start to allow you to see different things that you have not noticed before. And the other and my second point of how we can learn to, to see 
what we are not seeing about ourselves. The second thing is to process fear because fear really is um, something that can tick us out of being able to notice ourselves. Because when you're in fear, when you're in fight or flight mode, for one thing, your adrenaline is going and there's so much of different chemicals within your body that's pumping through that um, your immune system is, is at least 50% less than normal. And also your intelligence starts to um, drop as well, because when you are trying to run away from a tiger, um, those things don't, don't really matter. You don't have to be the smartest person and be able to solve um, all those really difficult math, uh, mathematical equations when you're running away from a tiger. And that's why when you're in stress mode, when you're in fear, your immune system shuts down quite a bit and also your um, intellectual abilities also shut down. So that's why being able to process your own fear to get to the point where you can, you can start to dissolve more of the fear, um, whether it is something that you, that is, so dissolving fear, it's a big step in that. And um, I know I've talked about how to, how to dissolve emotions before. I actually just want to add one more to all that I have um, talked about before in, in other episodes, is to just add one more exercise that you can all do to, to start to um, get out of the fear mode. And so this exercise is very simple, is to just get to a peaceful state of mind. You may want to do some um, five counts in, five counts out breathing, or you may want to do a bit of meditation first. And when you get to more calm state, then what you do is keep repeating this statement to yourself. Just, I am safe now. I am safe now. My body is safe now. I am safe now. So, you may want to play around with the wordings a little bit to, to tweak it so that it can bring you the most um, peaceful sensation in your body. So however, the, the general, or, or I should say the generic way to say it it's just, I am safe now. My body is safe now. I am safe now. So something to that effect. If you, let's, uh, so, so when you do that, when you keep repeating these two different sentences to yourself, also, Allow yourself to actually feel safe. Allow your, your body to relax as well. And also allow your own breathing to get to a um, more rhythmic and, and elongated state. So do this for maybe about 10, 15 minutes or however long you care to do it. 
is when you repeat these things to yourself, it really calms your body down. It re especially um, because we've been bombarded by so, so much fear upon, <laughs> for lack of a better word is, we've, there's been so much um, fear being pumped out in the in the social media and on tv and radio and all around us is if you just spend five ten minutes each day to let your body just relax and really allow yourself to hear that and to feel it in your body it really starts to calm yourself down very nicely and and also any kind of um, other process fear processing things that you might want to do will of course help as well so that's the second way is to really take care of the fear process the fear and if it's not fear that is really um, if you don't think that it's fear, or maybe it could be for some people, it could be anger that is triggering them and keeping them in fight or flight mode. If that's the case, then you can play around with the, the, the wording is that I am at peace now. Something about something to that effect that allows your body to understand that you are no longer trying to hold on to the anger. You're no longer trying to hold on to the frustration that you tell your unconscious mind. Because when you are saying that to yourself, whether out loud or just within yourself, you are really training your own unconscious mind that you are no longer at that state, that you really want to get to let go of all these um, anger, fear, and, and could be anxiety, all those things that is keeping you in fight or flight mode. So that is the second thing that we can do in order to, to allow ourselves to get back to normal. And the third thing that I can suggest that would assist us to be able to see what it is that we are not seeing about ourselves is to observe when or and also where you get triggered. So you know that you are triggered when you cannot respond to a situation differently. It's when you're triggered that there is a very um, predictable response. Let's say if somebody say something to you and you get triggered, then when you're triggered, you always feel, um, for example, I, I remember when I get triggered, one of my triggers is that I, um, I feel feel like I'm being, I return to being like a, a, a three-year-old that I'm completely my body. I can feel my body have that fear in it. And even though I'm no longer three-year-old, I'm actually, you know, way beyond three-year-old. And, but I still feel like I'm a kid and I don't know how to, um, I don't know what to say. I don't know. And I feel like I, all I can do is just stand there and, and be a three-year-old 
feeling completely discombobulated. So that for me is when I know that I'm being triggered. Why? Because I'm locked in to that feeling in my body, even though I am no longer three years old. So that's, that's when you know that it's a trauma, trauma response because it takes you right back to where you, the, the first time you got traumatized, it, it is, it locks you in to that response pattern. So, and where there is a, a locked in response, then you know that there has to be something that you are not seeing because if I see everything, then I would be able to choose my response. So observe when and where you get triggered. Observe when and where you um, feel that locked in response so that you can't respond differently even though you let's say even though you know that the best response um, is really to become to to become compassionate and really um, be more patient with other people but because you are triggered so all you can do is you just shout and um, so when you notice that you're in a locked in position of response, then start to take note, just observe at first, just observe what happened. And so noticing when you get triggered is the first, is the first, um, really the first thing to do is to observe it. Notice what you notice. And afterwards, when you get to, to become more, uh, when, you, when you are not as triggered, when you are out of that locked in response mode, when you are out of that triggered mode, then you can do something about it in the moment because you are locked in. So there's not, not much you can do except to just let it play out and simply observe how you behave. But after you are able to get out of that triggered mode, then there's actually a couple of things that you can do. So um, the first thing is first is to observe, is to keep on observing the trigger. So what do I mean by that? Is that you know you you encounter a situation with someone else or something else happening that triggers you, and in that moment there you. Like you don't really have a choice of response. You freak out whatever it is that you do. And then afterwards, when you calm down, what you do is you go back to review and observe. Play that, that um, movie back in your mind and you observe again. You observe the trigger and you observe your programmed response and then you notice all the emotions and the internal dialogue internal conversations that came up for you and you may want to write all of these down to really help and assist you in being able to to see everything to observe the whole event and um, when you notice emotions coming up, then you process the emotions as they come up. 
so let's say if you um if when you get when i get triggered i have that fear of i'm back to being three year old i don't know how to how to respond i am frozen i feel discombobulated so I process those emotions, the fear. So I would do, let's say, fear processing and also practice um, just processing the fear and also letting myself and my body know that I'm safe now. I'm not three years old anymore now. So those are the things that I can do to let go of the emotions. And then after a while, though, when, like, and when you notice that you know, some emotions just it's not leaving fast enough because when the emotions are, are right there, it actually does not take a long time for it to become expressed fully expressed but if you notice that the emotions are not leaving fast enough then what you can do is give yourself maybe a couple of minutes to to let go and if you notice it's not leaving fast enough then what you do is you allow source to come through you so what do i mean by that is that you drop you stop thinking because when you think you will have judgments when you're in your head you have judgments you would have all these um judgments coming up but when you drop down into your body when you stop thinking you stop looking at it as you you simply invite the the creator source part of yourself to come in and observe it through your eyes for a few minutes. So you drop out of being you and you simply come to a, a still point and allow the source part of you to keep observing the emotions as you through your eyes and give yourself another five minutes to observe the event as source through your eyes and then and then just wrap this up and if you still find that there are some emotions or something is still not fully resolved, then you repeat this again at a later time. So the, the idea is to not try to, you know, take, take out a, a day or, or a couple of days to do this releasing, is to only do this kind of um, releasing maybe no more than half an hour at a time and allow your your body to recuperate and also to start to live life rather than to simply process so that's one way of handling the 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 triggered and another way which is from um, let's see, I want to actually bring it up. Something that I, I learned from Jason Estes. So he called this the light of God process. So this is a worksheet that I would be able to send you all. Um, so what this does is you let's say so this is to 
also allow the source part of you to process as well. However, this is just a more um, a more directed way of doing it rather than just using the observation method. So what this does is there are 12 states statements here, 12 statements in this light of God process. So what you do is you see that there is um, these blanks. So the blanks is what it is that you want to release it. So use this process, like all these 12 statements for one thing and one thing only at a time. For example, I've been doing the, the this, let's say for um, sadness, for example, then you would pluck in wherever there's this these lines, you would pluck in an emotion, which, for example, sadness in there. So I would read the, the whole process for you once. And then this is actually something that I would like to take all of you to do um, in our meditation process. So, <clears throat> so this is working with light of God to clear away the old. So explanation, this, this blank space is the, the person, place, or thing that you are working with. And this process is very powerful and will change your life if you do it. I share it with you, I being Jason, share it with you because it's time we start the house clearing. This process brings no harm to anyone or anything. And you can do this process with people who are still in your life. It is simply surrendering the attachments and connections you have created, not your relationship. If anything, it should help clear and bring your relationships back into the light of God and joy. So the process is for this practice, to be most effective, it is recommended that you print this sheet and handwrite your words to fill in the blanks. Use only one person, place, or thing for each light of God sheet. You may wish to handwrite the sheet in full, but please keep in mind the practice may be more powerful this way. After each time you finish a sheet, it is recommended that you burn or shred the sheet to complete the practice. So speak or say in your mind the following in order. So these are the 12 statements. I now come into a place of unconditional love so I may witness this process without judgment, guilt, fear, shame, or any other emotion. I raise and fill in the blank emotion. So I did say that we're gonna use sadness. So I raise sadness into the light of God. I ask for 360 degree awareness around sadness. I sever all cords, ties, and attachments to sadness. I now unplug myself fully and completely from sadness. I give all these plucks to the light of God. I now fully and completely unplug sadness from myself. I give all of these plucks to the light of God. I now call back all of the power I have given sadness. I now create a golden box full of power, full of the power sadness has given me and place it at its feet so it may deal with it in its own time when it is ready. I now raise sadness into the light of God. 
I ask for 360 degree awareness around sadness. I scan for any and all unresolved emotions and energies around sadness. I surrender these emotions and energies into the light of God. I now surrender sadness into the light of God. And the last instruction is that watch the emotion of sadness disappear into the light of God. Say your final goodbyes and give thanks for your many experiences. So that is the process, light of God. And I've been using this and I do feel that it helps. That's why I'm sharing it with you all is um, also if it's something that is particularly sticky, like a, a stuck emotion for you, or um, a relationship that has been stuck for a long time, or a um, whatever it is, the, the thing, people, places, and emotions that is particularly stuck and you really have a tough time shifting it, the suggestion is to do this, the same, this, this light of God with the, using the same thing, let's say um, sadness for, for this example. So do it for 21 days, which means that each day you would repeat this. And when you say the sentences, the, the 12 sentences, is to really feel it in your body. So for example, when you say, I raise sadness into the light of God, really visualize yourself raising this emotion that, and, and the feeling that you associate with sadness into the light of God really visualize it and feel it in your body and and for sticky um really stuck energies then do this for 21 consecutive days so that is another way of doing it so these are these are at least two ways that i've shared that you can use to dissolve any triggers that you may have that is limiting your ability to respond, to respond to people, places, and events. And, and last but not least is really um, last thing that I can share with you to to answer, to get to see fully what it is that we are not seeing about ourselves is to actually ask the question, what am, not, what am I not seeing about whatever it is that you're trying to know more of? What am I not seeing about, let's say, um, sadness? What am I not seeing about the sadness or what am I not seeing about this relationship with my mom, for example, all these things. Just ask the question and be in the moment with this question. When you ask it, really notice what emotions, what stories, what clues may come up. Or maybe when you ask a question, all of a sudden you get a text from somebody to share some information with you. So, so that's what I mean by be in the moment and notice what you notice is that when you ask a question and oh, this question about a particular thing that you want to know more of is once you ask the question is to just notice what comes up. And whatever comes up, just know that it is relevant, even though it may not seem relevant at first, because it's, it's really um, synchronicity. Because when you ask the question, this thing happens. So energetically, 
whatever comes up is has something to do with giving you more clues and answer to your question. So those are the three methods, um, actually four methods that I have shared with you that's going to assist you in seeing what it is that you're not seeing, seeing all the pieces. So that's all I would like to um, talk about this